Now I have the time of my life. You're listening to That Gets My Goat on the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. And now here's your hosts, Rish Outfield and Big Anklevich. Wow, that one was better. Yeah. Hi, everybody. This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rish Outfield. And this is the That Gets My Goat cast. Good. That's a new new name for it. I like it, though. The Goat Cast. Thank you for joining us once again. A few months ago, I got the idea of, hey, let's do a listener question and answer episode. People could post whatever questions they'd want us to answer in a future episode, and we'd do it. And I am not sure that anybody asked any questions. And so it just sat. And then I remembered, oh, hey, we, we should do that sometime. Especially now that we have these mobile recording sessions where oh, wait, it's the only t- way you and I can get together. Yeah, sort of. Right now, that's the way it's going. But I, I have here a list of questions that, from people. And I just thought, well, we'll go through them and we'll have it be an episode. All right. So uh, I see you've got uh, an eBay uh, receipt there, but do you have the questions? <laughs> I, on the same piece of paper, because I am hopelessly cheap, I have the questions. All right. Okay, question number one. Oh, now this is unique. Where does the name Doonstief come from? Uh, You'll have to take that one, Rick. I, I guess I can answer that. Um, I swear that I've answered this one before. Oh, I don't, I don't think um, so. I think, well, okay. I'll, I'll, I guess I'll answer it then. Um, Anyways, uh, you guys have probably heard uh, the limerick, limerick that is held up above all other limericks. It's like Hamlet is held up as like the great play. This is the great limerick. Uh, you, you've certainly all heard it. It starts out, there was an old man from Nantucket, and goes from there. Uh, but yeah, the guy that originally came up with that limerick, his name was uh, Roger Doonstief. So I, I'm a big fan of that limerick, and I believe you are too, so... Oh, yeah, I've it, never met a man, woman, or child who was not a fan. Yeah, so there you go. So, yeah, it just seemed like the natural name for the show is to take that guy's name and, and put it forth as an homage to the gentleman. Well, there you have it, folks. Don't ever ask again. <laughs> all right. The uh, the next question. These are all pretty hard-hitting, it looks like. Uh, they're really going after us and digging for the real dirt. Uh, the next question is, what is your favorite Patrick Swayze movie? Ooh, I'll let you uh, field that first. Jeez, I don't know. Patrick Swayze came to light around that time period where I cared who all the girls liked. It bothered me. And <laughs> and so I didn't like Patrick Swayze for a long time. And I'm trying to think. I, I guess it would have to be Ghost. That's your favorite? I, yeah, I can't think of one I like more. Okay. I never saw Ghost. Everybody, like you said, the girls liked... That was one of those movies that all the girls watched over and over and over again. And uh, that's where that uh, Unchained Melody song was uh, unleashed upon our generation. Yeah. Again, and was through that song, or that movie, sorry. And uh, yeah, and I steered clear of it because I guess I was the same kind of thing. I, I disliked the dude that all the girls were swooning over because they were supposed to be swooning over me. And if they were swooning over anyone else, then something was wrong. So, Ghost is not my favorite. Neither is Dirty Dancing. The girls also like that one. <laughs> Patrick Swayze is just one of those dudes that all the girls swooned over for a while. I guess they just loved that mullet and the wife beater tank top. And speaking of the mullet and the wife beater tank top, Big Trouble in Little China is my favorite Patrick Swayze movie. And he wore the mullet <laughs> and the wife beater through that show, I believe, the entire way. It's a sad thing because I recently showed that movie to my kids. They didn't like it at all, which was kind did, did of Did you upsetting. sleep through it the last time you watched it by any chance? <laughs> no, dude. It's funny because when we finished it, my wife said, what, how old were you when you saw this movie the last time? Were you like right around, you know, 12 years old? It's like, maybe. But all that stuff I really enjoyed. And yeah, the, the special effects were really cheesy and we talk about bad special effects. And there's just as bad as stuff from the movies that we get now. And it cost $100 million more for those special effects. So, 
I don't know. I mean, it was really a confusing, crazy jumble of stuff. All right, the, the, the listeners are waiting, uh, waiting to see what will happen. In deference to the man or woman who asked this question, Kurt Russell was the star of Big oh, Blow, damn. Trouble in Little China. Damn, are you serious? So you have to come up with another oh, magic season. Oh, crap. Those guys are the same dude, aren't they? <laughs> they have a mullet and a wife, Peter. Oh, my gosh, that was Kurt Russell. You're right. No wonder I liked it. <laughs> Because it didn't have Patrick Swayze. Shoot, what did, what did? Okay, my favorite. No, this is probably Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell was in Stargate too, wasn't he? Yes. Damn it! I don't know that I have a favorite Patrick Swayze movie. Then Roadhouse. Okay, I've never Roadhouse. seen it, but it's my favorite. <laughs> I know he was at least in it. He was. What he other? Was. What other things was he in? Uh, Red Dawn. A lot of people liked him in. Okay. Um, he was the bro- uh, the the good brother, I think, in The Outsiders. Okay, People no, really no, liked The Outsiders. The Outsiders. Yeah, he was in Donnie Darko. That was probably mm-hmm. the last significant thing he did. Yeah. But, I, okay, Shoot. you don't have one. I I'm guess sorry. I don't. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, question number three. How did you two first meet? Well, we were walking down the street on a full moon. Was it really romantic setting? No, I don't know. Um, I don't know that we could put a finger on it, really. I mean, uh, we were both in film school. Was the first time that we met on the set of that uh, elevator movie? Was that the first time that you met me, or was it before that? I think we were already in that screenwriting class together. I think we made that while we were in that screenwriting class. Oh, really? I, knew who you were um, but I didn't I, w- I became friends with your friend Ian right and for some reason I was really drawn to him sexually oh he and was just one of those really charismatic people I mean he won like awards for being charismatic they gave him like most likely to succeed in film awards because he's just one of those schmoozy kind of guys. Well, right. Whenever we wanted permission for something, like to shoot on campus or whatever, we would have him be the spokesman because he would get things done. And when he and I had to go before the board to try and get permission to do this project, he said, just let me talk. Don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> we want to actually succeed here, so please. Yeah, he was that kind of a guy, um, and I think he knew, he was he was in the intro to film class with you, right? Yeah. I, I don't know that he was. Maybe he was, but I think we weren't in the same. Well, that was one of those classes with 150 people. Right, yeah, had a lot of folks. Um, but I want to say that he was, and that's kind of where you and him first kind of met, and, and then through him we met. And maybe that was the first time that I really got to know you was when we took that screenwriting class together. So we did that movie while we were in that class, huh? Yeah, we That's did. That's what I think. We did this goofy movie where we there was this really large elevator in the uh, one of the buildings, and I think it was basically for it was the performing arts building. I think it was basically for these performing arts people to bring their crap, put it on the elevator, and take it to whatever theater they were supposed to be putting it in, kind of a thing. So it was this humongous elevator, and so we thought it would be really funny to set it up like it was somebody's office and so we brought a desk and we you know totally decorated it up and put like paintings on the wall and all that kind of crap and uh, had a guy going in for an interview with this guy that has the office in the elevator and he gets to the elevator and he's like this can't be right but he pushes the button the door opens and there's the dude sitting in there in his office he says yes come on in and yeah, and then they sit there and they go through a, a job interview as people keep getting on and off the elevator into this guy's office. And I don't know, I thought it was pretty humorous. And yeah, Rish was the lead. I was the, the dude, interviewer. Yeah, we. Dude getting interviewed. Uh, our friend Ian was the guy doing the interview. I was the dude who got on the elevator at the end who was also coming in for an interview. And we kind of share this look like... I go, what What the heck? And you go, uh-huh. it is what it is, man. And, the uh, thing that I remember about that is we shot it late at night because we didn't want people to be using the elevator. And so they even got pieces of paper and taped them over the, the buttons. You know, says, hey, this is out of order. Please don't push the button. And people would peel off that piece of paper 
and push the button. And any time somebody did that, we had to stop shooting because all of the camera equipment and, and lights were plugged in. Yeah. And when the elevator started to move, it would yank those out of the wall. <laughs> oh, it was so frustrating. We finally ended up having to post somebody down there, like a security guard kind of guy, <laughs> to say, hey, I'm sorry, it's, 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 it's out of order. No, please don't. don't. Sir, don't put... Oh, why did you do that? And that's something I didn't get. It was why people pushed it anyway. Yeah. There was a character in the movie that was the security guard, so... We had a security guard outfit already, so <laughs> we were set. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, it, it, it was around that time. I mean, yeah, we met at film school, basically. It's not something you could put, you know, there wasn't some, you know, it's not like uh, when a, a married couple can tell you, oh, yes, we first met, we went on this date, and oh, it was... We don't really have a story that you can pinpoint as, hey, we first met here. But, uh, yeah, there you go. Okay, next question. Sorry, we may have to do this one in two parts, by the way, because we're halfway through our allotted time. Okay. Oh, you'll like this one. Which do you like better? <laughs> Dirty Dancing or Pretty Woman? Huh. Somebody's got a thing for Patrick Swayze. I wonder. Yeah, I wonder who, who put these in here. You want to go first or you want me? Let's just do it on three, right? One, two, three. Pretty, Pretty woman. woman. Okay, there. Do we need to expand Do, I don't on that? I think so. You haven't even seen Dirty Oh, wait, you have seen Dirty Dancing. Not really. I've seen parts of it. Yeah, I've never seen me the too. Whole thing. I've never seen the whole thing either. I just. Never been drawn to it. I've heard that it's awful. And if you're a female and you like seeing Patrick Swayze's rippling muscles as he dances, I actually saw. What was it? My wife had the Dancing with the Stars or something like that on where they had two of their dancers do like a recreation of the big end of the movie dance that they did and I was watching and I was just like wow this dance sucks <laughs> like I don't watch this show very often but all the dances they do on this show are way better than this one that's supposed to be this iconic wonderful dance from this movie so well, when people talk about the appeal of Twilight being that Bella Swan is like this normal average plain girl and yet everybody wants her and that's a, a fantasy for women I, you know I can say that definitely that can be the case with Jennifer Grey yeah. in Dirty Dancing because she's not attractive the thing is though Kristen Stewart is a total babe compared to Jennifer Grey yes sir Anyhow, I, 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 I guess that's a mean thing to say, but I just I guess I can understand the way people liked Dirty Dancing because she's a relatable character, I guess, and, and because nobody puts a baby in the corner. That's right. Okay, uh, question number five. Armed with a six-shot magnum and a baseball-slash-cricket bat, would you rather fight a pack of ten Romero-type zombies or one giant tarantula? I think I would go Romero Zombies. Romero Zombies are slow enough. Um, unfortunately, there's ten, so you can't shoot them all. I would have to be a better shot. See, I'm not. I'm not a gun person, so I don't. If I was given a six-shot magnum, I would probably miss with all six shots. Sadly. Yeah, you don't see that much in, in movies. Um, but it would be much more realistic. It's yeah. Like, Ooh. They're like, well, I'm out of bullets, and there's still nine. Yeah, they're like, well, good thing I got this cricket bat. Unfortunately, I have no idea how to swing a cricket bat. If only I had a baseball bat. I would rather <laughs> s do the Romero zombies if I had to, to fight them. But in a movie, I would rather see the one giant tarantula. Yeah. Because I'm sick to death of zombies. <laughs> There's not a lot of giant tarantula movies. I, I, I True. I would hope... Yeah, but yeah, they are much more menacing, I would say, than Romero Zombies. Romero Zombies are good because they're the slow zombies. They're not like the World War Z zombies that are running full speed and jumping off buildings at you and stuff like that. You know, these are the zombies that can't figure out how to open a door. So, you know, you, you can do a lot to avoid them. A, a giant tarantula. Tarantulas move pretty fast. I wonder what size the giant tarantula... I'm, I'm assuming we're talking like a car-sized tarantula, not like a dog-sized tarantula. If it were a dog size, maybe I'd pick that, because then it's still manageable. I mean, it's pretty scary and dangerous and fast-moving, but it's small enough. See, a dog-sized tarantula, I think I would want to capture <laughs> and take to a zoo or something. Right. But if it's a Volkswagen-sized tarantula... Then you got to kill it. Yeah, you can't capture a Volkswagen-sized tarantula unless you've got, I don't know, uh, I don't know what you could capture it with. Okay, what's the next question? 
What's your favorite song from the Dirty Dancing soundtrack? Uh, uh, what song? I know there's the Time of Our Lives song. Yeah, I have is the Time of My Life. What else is on there? Uh, Patrick Swayze himself sang, She's Like the Wind. Oh, she's Like the Through Wind. Through My Trees. Okay. Uh, Eric Carmen sang, Hungry Eyes. Okay. I, I think that would be my pick. I like Hungry Eyes. Okay. Pro- I, pro- I probably would go with that too, uh, but... There, Are the, there any others? There was that, uh, hello, lover boy. How do you call your lover boy? That's, <laughs> you know, baby, that does, oh, oh, baby. That song does sound familiar, but. My sweet baby, you you're the one. Dang, dang, okay, dang. Well, we're going to move on. I say she's like the wind. Wait, sorry, what was the, th- the other one? Hungry Eyes. I say Hungry Eyes. See, I really like Followed liked... by She's Like the Wind, which was also good. And then lastly is that Oh, the Child. I don't like that song very much. Oh, really? I liked all it's of those It's not terrible, songs. but it's not. A, I'm not a fan. Having never seen Dirty Dancing, we were surrounded by that soundtrack all the time. Yeah, it was on And there were station. other songs, too. I just can't remember. They, they got radio play. But... Uh, yeah, it was like... It was one of those movies like uh, Fame or... What was that other dancing one? Uh, Flashdance? Flashdance, right. Some of those ones just had the soundtrack where you heard all the songs. And it was as well known for the soundtrack as for the movie itself. All the songs are such big hits. Okay. Okay, question number seven. What is the hardest slash easiest part about doing your podcast? Shoot, presently the hardest part about it is just finding a time we can get together because my schedule is different every Monday. Today we're doing it before I go to work. I'm supposed to be leaving probably, oh no, I've still, I still got six minutes. i still got time. Um, <laughs> we'll have to cut this list in half and do the second half in yeah, the future. Yeah, that's the hardest part presently. Well, see, I, I disagree because you and I have done episodes over the phone before when we couldn't get together. You know what I mean? To me, the hardest part is editing the damn thing. Yeah. I, I, unless you have a podcast, like if Marshall Latham is listening, you know what we're talking about. Brian Lincoln, you know what we're talking about. Abby Hilton, you know what we're talking about, but you do it better because you're a girl. It always takes so much longer than you think it would take yeah. for everything. That's the reason why that last Broken Mirror story that I'm editing is, hasn't seen the air yet. because It's taking so much longer than I think it would. And you used to be lightning fast on those, or and I'm sure you're still faster than 90% of people who would edit these things, but it's just the amount of work, and every new character that you have doubles yeah. that. And you keep stumbling across things, too, like with the story that I'm working on now, going along, going along, got all the... And then, oh, crap, here's a line I don't have. We never got somebody to do that, so I send you an IM, and you're like, oh, well, should I ask this person? So, yeah, now we've got... At least a few days, probably, as we wait for this person, depending on who it is, sometimes with weeks or months, before they get that one line back to us. It's such a ordeal. And like you were saying, I used to be lightning fast. I think a lot of the lightning fastness depends on your attitude towards it or your willingness to just sit and go and go and go for hour after hour after hour. And at a certain point, I started to burn out on that. I just had a much harder time with it, and I thought, okay, either this podcast is going to die, or we need to branch out and get people to help us to do that kind of stuff. And we did. We managed to branch out and get lots of people to help us, and that's probably the only reason we're still going. Well, the one you're working on right now, I was going to produce that, (laughs) and it just sat for, I'd say, four months with me not even... I mean, I had gotten the lines together, and that was all I was willing to do for it. Yeah, then you panned it over to me, saying, yeah, it's never going to get done. So I'm like, okay, I'll do it. And, and then it sat for two more months before I ever started it. And it got to the point where it was had to be the next episode. And I'm like, oh, crap, I guess I better start on And then I still didn't start it. And we're like, oh, well, we'll do that one episode where we just take the, the audiobook story that you did. And it was basically just to buy me time to finish this thing. And I'm still not done. But, yeah, that definitely is probably the hardest part is getting it all together just to, you've got to be really into it really excited and it's hard to keep up that level of excitement over you know I and mean, we've been doing what we're going on this is our fourth year right fifth sir we make five years like in two days or our, our first episode no shoot is today july 1st well, this is july 1st that we're recording this yeah 
today is our fifth year anniversary <laughs> of the podcast because the first episode came out July 1st. Oh, well, congratulations. Yeah. Talk about when we met and it's our anniversary. How about that? Yeah, romantic, <laughs> baby. I the time of my life. When we first started the show, it was all so new. We hadn't done it. We didn't know what was ahead. And there seemed to be so many possibilities. And every time somebody sent us a story when it first started, I was excited. And that's that started to wane. It became harder and harder to keep that excitement going. You know, there'd be any little thing, any little obstacle in our way, like when we would get together and record a whole episode and then it would be blank right. or it would get inadvertently deleted or whatever. That was another thing. It was just like, oh, why do we do this? And eventually those added up and it started to be a weight on our backs. And I think more on yours because you had the lion's share of work to do on the show. And now I, I, we do it so infrequently that the easiest part for me is just sitting down here and talking to you. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. The easiest part is recording the episodes themselves because that's that's the part that is fun and is is fun enough to make you want to keep going, you know what I mean? Like during the week you're just like, "Eh, we'll get together, but you know, and you're just like, yeah, we got to get together. It's fun. It's fun to just sit around and BS over a mic. And that's the part that yeah, keeps you going is that there is still fun. If it ever got to the point where it wasn't fun, then I guess that would be the time that we put an end to the show. But luckily, I don't see that happening. This part, I think, will always be fun. You know, let's let's say that that was our last question. Okay, we have one more minute. Are you sure? Well, there, there are other questions, and we can talk about them the next time we get together, or you know, maybe we'll do a review of a movie that we saw or something in between this episode and the next Q&A kind of thing. <laughs> And feel free to ask us other questions in the future if you'd like, and maybe we'll do this every few months. We'll do a Q&A kind of thing. I think it's fun, and it, sure. it's stuff that... Would we ever have talked about Patrick Swayze three times in a row <laughs> without? But We uh, didn't talk about Patrick Swayze. We talked about Kurt Russell. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, gosh. It's semi-embarrassing. Too bad we can't edit that out. No. I'm sorry, man. To go back to the how we first met kind of thing I wish that I had known then that you and I would be so simpatico or rather we would have that we had so many of the same likes and interests and all that stuff because when you're in school you're meeting all sorts of new people and you get pulled in all sorts of different ways and and see I I didn't know what I wanted to be or what I wanted to do I wanted to be a giant loser who didn't make any money and lived for Mondays when we could do my podcast also for not any money. No, uh, I, you know, you, you have all sorts of people that you don't know if they'll be your friends in the future or any of that stuff. Right. But had I known that all these years later you and I would still hang out and have things in common and stories that we hadn't heard from one another's lives and all that stuff, it would have been more of a priority. And Think of the things that we could have accomplished. I didn't know until like six months after meeting you that you were a writer or that you wanted to write. The first time I remember reading something of yours was a script that you wrote called The Hunter and the Hunted, and immediately I had to sully it with my own stupid ideas, but I was just like, oh, hey, there's another guy who wants to be a writer, and I know I've said this on the air many times. Everybody wanted to be either a producer or a director, and I was the only one, until I met you, that wanted to be a writer, because the writers get peed on, you know, and nobody appreciates the writer. Nobody wants to get the autograph of the writer, and so... uh, there's that because you and I have all these things in common we've managed to do this for five years now and it's still fun even though some things aren't so fun and and sometimes I feel guilty that we don't get more stuff out there uh, so again we'll always take help if you want to edit a an episode of the Dune Stee- a story for the Dune Stee- if you want to edit a that gets my goat <laughs> cut out the Kurt Russell references that's help that we can use. I did episode art yesterday. And anytime I do the episode art, you're going to know it because it sucks. <laughs> but part of me is like, well, this is my show. I should do everything. I should do more. But we can't do more. I mean, we can. We can't do everything. And so... You're not Superman. That's right. <laughs> that was a great line yeah. in that movie. That's how that first trailer ended. Uh, anyhow... Wow, five years. 
That's really cool. So it's fortuitous that we sat here and that somebody asked this question and you remembered that. Thank you for sending in these, these questions and thanks for sitting down with me big and, and answering a couple of them. And there are many more questions to go and so there's something to look forward to in the future. Yeah. All right. See you later, folks. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons Attribution, Non-Commercial, No Derivatives License. Today's show stuck more than usual. Not more than usual.